Yeah. You see my, my superb rollerblading skills? Haven't done it in 20 years. Hell ye, Meech. Look at me go. <laughs> That's the brakes. <laughs> my channel this week as you can probably tell i saw the barbie movie just like everybody else in the world and i fell in love with all of the costumes and because i'm a masochist i decided to make more costumes 21 days out before i fly over to dragon con so not only did i make this barbie costume this week but i also made ken well, not that particular one, but I made his rollerblade outfit as well. So without any further ado, let me show you how I made the Barbie and Ken rollerblade costumes. So first of all, I will be tackling Ken's costume. These are the patterns I will be using. And first of all, let's start with the shirt. For the fabric, I am using one meter of a hot pink cotton spandex. First things first, it's time to cut out all of the pattern pieces. Next, I transfer any notches and markings on the pattern pieces. And on to sewing. So first I attach the front and back pieces together at the shoulder seams. I then sew the neckband together. And once that's done, I fold it in half and pin it to the neckline of the shirt. I then sew the neckband in, making sure to stretch the fabric as I go so that it maintains its stitch. Once that's done, I then fold it over and top stitch it in place and here's how it looks. Next, I finish the sleeves by giving them a rolled hem. And finally for the shirt, I sew the side seams together and give it a rolled hem along the bottom edge and it is done. Now onto the shorts. I'm using one meter of this 90s neon cotton from Spoonflower and I cut out the pattern pieces for Simplicity S9314. The first part of assembly for the shorts is sewing the pockets in. After the pockets are put in, it's time to start assembling the shorts, so I'm starting with the centre front seam here. After the faux fly, it's time to sew up the side seams. And the centre seam. Let's just take a second to appreciate this absolutely blessed scene. Look at that. Look at that line up in there. That's incredible. Functional shorts. I know they're not made to fit me, but Cameron's not here, so. Cool. Now onto the waistband, so here I'm making buttonholes so that I can put a drawstring in. I then fold the waistband in half and attach it along the waistband part of the shorts. Finally threading through some elastic. Shorts are done. I'm just waiting for Cam to come home so that he can try them on, but look how cute they are. With the shorts done, it's now on to the vest. I'm using the same fabric as the shorts and McCall's M5252 for the pattern. The first step is attaching the front and back pieces together at the shoulder seams and then inserting the collar. Then I move on to adding the pockets into the front panels, after a quick dance break, of course. Did anybody else absolutely love the way that Ryan Gosling pronounced Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
I want to add a lining to it. Now this pattern doesn't actually call for a lining because it wants you to sew it out of the most horrendous polar fleece ever and then it comes with options for finishing the seams on the inside but I'm lining it because I don't want you to see this white colour on the inside. So I've got this yellow fabric here and basically what I'm going to do is all of the steps you just watched me do minus the pockets and then I'm going to sew it onto the inside of this. Lining time. A few moments later. Alrighty, so the lining is now in and I've also put the zipper in the front. Now I just wanted to point something out with the zipper. As you can see in this section here, it doesn't go all the way up to the top. So the zipper should go right up to the top of the collar there. But I could not for the life of me find a hot pink zipper in New Zealand that was 28 inches long. So the closest I got was this one, which was 25. And I thought he wears the jacket open the entire time. So it doesn't actually need to function as a proper zip. It just needed to be there for aesthetics. And yeah, look, pretty. So now all I've got left to do on this is to sew up the side pieces here. And that is Ken's rollerblade outfit. Well, the outfit part of it done. So here we go. We have Cameron trying it all on so far. So all I have left to do is hem the bottom of the vest here and then also hem the bottom of the shorts along here. I think I'll also bring them up so that they're sitting at that level. But yeah, how do you feel about it, Cam? Awesome. With Ken out of the way, it is on to the main attraction, aka Barbie. Fabrics wise, I'm using one meter of that same spoon flower fabric, but this time in spandex and one meter of a neon pink spandex to line it with. For the pattern, I'm using Butterick 6541, and that pattern is actually from the 90s, so that felt real cool to be able to use an authentic 90s pattern for this. Anyway, I started by sewing the lining pieces together. All right, so trying it on for the first time, it's too big. I made the size that was recommended to me, but as you can see, I mean, it's it's baggy over the clothes I'm wearing, and I'm wearing sweatpants, so I'll probably cut out a size smaller. I also have to change the shape in the back to be more of a thong like what she's wearing. And I'm not sure about the hip height at the moment. I think that might actually be all right for how high it's sitting. Oh well, let's make the smaller size and try it back on. After cutting the next size down, I also alter that back piece as well. And now I can cut the pattern pieces out of the main fabric. Just like last time, I start by sewing the lining pieces together and then the main outer fabric. I then hand baste the lining fabric to the main fabric just to keep it in place before overlocking all of the edges together. I then fold over the edges along the neckline, armholes and leg holes and create casings where I later put elastic into. Alright, so here is the final try on before the big reveal. All I've got left to do is to put the elastic in the leg holes, but look how cool it looks! It was at this point I decided it'd be really cool to paint all of those white dots with glitter so that they would sparkle. I may come to regret this decision later on. So I was just in the middle of painting the glitter onto my leotard when I got a really cool delivery in the post. Now I ordered these months ago and I just assumed at this point they weren't going to arrive, well, at all. But they're here. I got them off at AliExpress and yeah, now the outfit will actually be complete complete this weekend. That's awesome. Hello, it is another day, another extremely cold day. Today is all about accessories. So I'm just about done with painting the sparkles on Ken and Barbie, so I thought I'd make a start on Ken's bum bag. I have never made one before, so this is going to be an experience. I found a free pattern on Spoonflower's blog, so I'm going to be using that. So let's get stuck into it. Here is a list of all the ingredients you will need to make this bum bag. So of course I start off by cutting out the main fabric pieces and lining pieces. 
Then I create a sandwich of main fabric, lining fabric, main fabric, and I add a zip to it and sew it together. Now onto the waist strap. That's what you call this, right? Anyway, you just thread it through the buckle and to finish those ends and make sure they don't fray, I set them on fire. Then I add them into these little side tabby things and I sew them together. And then I sew part of the waist strap thingy to the slide adjuster thingy. I have no idea what these pieces are called, but you can see them. You, you see what they are. Next I add the waist strap to the actual bum bag itself, then I sew all of the pieces together and voila, we are about to have a complete bum bag. And there we go, completed bum bag. So it's not exactly the prettiest bum bag, but it is functional. The zipper opens and closes, uh, <laughs> which is a lot easier to do with two hands. But yeah, my only complaint about it is that it is quite flat, but it was a free sewing pattern, so that's great in my books. Five minutes later. So I'm still waiting for glitter to dry on this one here. I've got most of the vest done and just a little bit started on the shorts, so it's taking forever to do those. Anyway, I am still working on accessories in between that. I did a test spray of this hair shoe just to see if it would take to the neon paint before doing both of them. And as you can see, it has taken to it very well. So let me show you how I did it. I brought these shoes at the op shop, which is cool because they were cheap and it means I won't cry about it if I accidentally ruin them and this doesn't work. Anyway, this is the paint that I use to paint them with. And I just go in with nice, light, even coats until I reach a desired neon effect. I've also managed to make one of the hats. Now, I didn't film the process of making this one because it was one of those times where it's a lot easier for me to just run through a whole process, not have to stop start, you know, filming all the time. I'm happy with how it's turned out. It's, <laughs> it looks great from the outside, but we just won't show you the inside because it's a bit messy. But I will show you how I made it because now I have to make Ken's one, don't I? Now for the hats, you will be sacrificing a hat that you found at the op shop and using scraps left over from whichever Barbie or Ken costume it is that you are making it for. First step, sacrifice the op shop hat. So you want to take it apart and you want to keep this broom part and you also want to keep that broom fabric because we're using that as a template to cut out a pattern piece to cover the broom. Now we're going to sew those two fabric pieces together to create a new home for the old broom piece to live in. So you want to make sure that broom piece is nice and secure, so you're going to sew it in place so it cannot escape. Next, cut out a few strips of fabric because we are going to make bias tape. Yay, my favourite thing to do. It's really not, I hate this, it's tedious. Anyway, pin it along the brim of the hat and begin to hand sew it in place and do this for hours. And oh my god, I said it was tedious. Anyway, cut out a long strip of fabric, make a brim piece, sew the visor to it and you pretty much have a hat. Another one done. I think that's basically everything done now apart from glitter it just takes forever it just does so yeah i'm going to finish doing that over the next couple of days and next time you see all of this we should be wearing them here we go welcome to my mojo dojo cafe i'm kid
there you have it. That is how I made Barbie and Ken's rollerblade costumes from the Barbie movie. I'm super happy with how these turned out. My costume is incredibly comfortable. It's probably the most comfortable costume I have ever worn. Oh, one thing that I was actually really happy about was I got to make my costume using a vintage 90s pattern. That's right, 90s is vintage now. So that was cool, you know, it's of the era and it just felt neat using something like that. The only bummer thing about it though is the shorts. I did try attempting to make them myself out of the Hivers fabric, but they just didn't look right. I like the ones I'm wearing at the moment because they're nice and compression-y and they make me hold my shape and stuff. And the other ones, they just look like spandex shorts if you get my drift, so I completely abandoned those. I have ordered new wigs for both Barbie and Ken. I don't think they're going to arrive before we fly out to Dragon Con, which is a bit of a shame, but they should be here for future conventions and stuff. They're just um, nicer colours, nicer cut, yeah, a bit more accurate to what Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie's ones look like in the film. How do you feel about your Ken costume? Do you have any words of wisdom you want to share with my 10 subscribers? <laughs> Was it comfortable? Um, yeah, yeah, it was comfy. The uh, only thing that wasn't so comfy was the wig. Yeah. Um, but the rest of it was just like wearing a shirt and ball shorts. So. Oh, very good. Um, another thing I want to point out is if you stand up and show your booty to the camera. <laughs> so this is the only part of the shorts that don't have glitter on them yet. Everything else is completely and utterly glittified. Thank you. Very nice booty. <laughs> Everything else has the glitter on it so I'm just going to get that done a little bit each day before I go to Dragon Con. I severely underestimated how long it would take to paint individual pieces of glitter onto our costumes. <laughs> With all that being said, I have got more costumes to make before Dragon Con, more clothes. I am just, oh my gosh, there is so much left to do. Anyway, if you like what you saw here today, please consider hitting the like and or subscribe button. I usually do stuff sewing, crafting and fun related on this channel and I usually try and upload every weekend or so. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.